then a remedy that would not need preclearance and thus would not push back the primary dates would be for the court to find an equal protection violation. That's the only way for us not to push the primaries back, or excuse me, to require preclearance and likely push the primaries back. And by the way, pushing the primaries back would require preclearance as well, which we don't have time to get. So I guess my question and my point here is in a very practical way. I understand what everybody's trying to do, and I want to do it too. But in a practical way, isn't the only solution for either the federal court or if it's a state equal protection violation, the state court to find that violation and then that does not need preclearance by the Justice Department, as you know, and then they would have access to the ballot? Well, Senator, we can't, we I'm don't have... you if, that's, if that would work. Well, we don't have control over what a court's going to decide. We don't know what they're going to decide. Well, I mean, you just told me that it's a clear equal protection violation. No, I, I think it's a strong I got case. Um, <clears throat> okay. Well, we don't know what they're going to decide or when they're going to decide it. I don't. <laughs> if that frankly, were, I don't understand why the equal protection issue was not raised I don't in this I'm suit. Surprised and, there, and therein is an example. We can't rely on what's going to happen in court because you would have thought that the plaintiffs in the in the case that was handed Absolutely. down last week would have raised an equal protection issue and it did well if we and pass a resolution they didn't. if we passed a resolution that said we believed it violated equal protection and encouraged the court to take that in consideration we wouldn't have to get preclearance for that resolution and it might help the plaintiffs in that case and we wouldn't have to get preclearance and we wouldn't have to bump the primary Sen case. senator let me say this yes if, if your proposed solution will passing this amendment does not preclude your solution from materializing but i'm worried because we're we're not because that litigation will probably go right. forward regardless of what we do but i'm worried and, that this is going to push the primaries back well if we have the remedy that you're envisioning the court may provide then the We'd primaries okay. wouldn't be pushed back and so we can, we can, the tracks can be collateral, but we control the legislative track. We don't control what's going to happen in the judicial um, arena, but the judicial arena may end up trumping what we try to do legislatively. Well, we, can we, help have, judicial we have to pick our poison. I mean, preclearance, equal protection, Supreme Court precedents. I mean, really, it's a conundrum, but I think we have to craft something that will pass muster in our state court not violate the holding in JRC builders that we, we're trying to just undo one of their decisions and also pass equal protection muster. I think that's our responsibility and hopefully the Justice Department will, will expedite this, particularly if we're kind of on a united front and wanting it to be passed. Senator from Berkeley has it. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, I've got a subcommittee meeting and I'll be back as soon as it's over. We've got witnesses that's going to testify, so I'm going to listen to the witnesses. We have my proxy, but I'll be back. Mr. Chairman. Let's take it that, 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 that'll yeah, Mr. Chair. That'll help. We don't need this discussion right now. Senator Darling. Mr. Chair, I, I um, just want to um, sort of move move this ball on down on down the road some. I, I really think that we are talking about two different classes on exempt and non-exempt. The rational basis argument makes some, some sense from a lay perspective. It does appear that people are treated unfairly, but in a legal sense, I don't think that it is because you're talking about two different classes. But I think we need to get to a solution to where we can move the ball down the road. And so with that, what I want to do is, is that I move, I move that we strike the, the um, the preamble and the finding in section one and just keep the substance of the bill intact. Mr. We, Chairman, Senator um, Charleston, I, you know, section one are findings. If we end up in court, we can argue that. That's right. Um, it's not substantive, so I, I would concur in that amendment. Right. If that brings some, some votes and support for it. All right. Yeah, but we, he would delete the section one, which were the findings, and the findings only, and the uh, the portion of the title that relates to the findings. We have a motion. We have a second. Senator Charleston, any discussion on that point? Senator from Senator Fairfield. I want to make it clear that, that 
when we're dealing with this, we're talking about the treatment and also uh, the equal protection. We're taking it out. Taking that all that out. That's correct. With that. And that's throughout. That will be part of an argument that will right. be made. Right. So that's it, it, it's that cloud, and I'm sorry that's clouded this issue this long. Senator from uh, Dorchester, do you have a comment? Is there a need to? Mr. Chairman, I have a comment that's related to this amendment. Well, it, it's related in that there's another alternative. It's not related in that I object to what we're about to do. So we can go ahead and vote on this. Okay. Mr. Chairman. Yes, Senator from Rich. Mr. Chairman, it's, it's, it's been quite clear that the whole discussion on this amendment and trying to move this thing forward is somewhat around everybody in the back. It's uh, what now? It's, it's been pointed to everyone <coughs> on the first two rows. There's some of us who are further who have been most of the morning trying to make our points and have been unable to be able to even make our points as it relates to, as, as it relates to the subject matter. Right. I don't want to rush and try to get something out there just right. to have something out there. I understand. First and foremost, I don't want the public to walk away and think this joint resolution is going to fix this problem because it's not going to fix the problem. We're talking about permanent law. And you're going to have to find a vehicle to take care of that. The other part on the preclearance, I want to go back to what the Senator from Orangeburg indicated. Any changes that we make that goes to lot beyond the March 30 date affects three provisions of the law. That's 13.110 and 13.11.40. And unless you're going to suspend all those sections to try to fix this problem, it's not going to occur. We sit here most of the morning, we discuss and we argue why the General Assembly is treated different from the rest of the, of the other person, simply because it makes reference back to all appointed and elected officials. And that's why it never got preclearance. B got preclearance. B got preclearance from, from the Justice Department because these are new people <coughs> who have never filed a statement of economic interest. Now, I think we need to be very, very clear on that. This joint resolution, if we use any phase of this joint resolution, puts a date further beyond the April 15th date, which is clearly identified in 1140. Okay. These other provisions that you're trying, trying to do, we may as well face it. Even if we pass it, we're, 30, we're left with 35 days from an election. That's not enough time. For the election commission to do all the things it needs to do to prepare us for an election. And what we're really facing, to be perfectly honest, is whether or not we're going to change the primary date. And I don't think we're supported here to change the primary date. So I want to go back again to what the Son of March group said, that March the 30th date is a provision we can do to get around having to get this thing pretty clear, yeah. simply because we changed something in the law. But if you're going to go beyond that of the law, I would caution you. I would caution you <coughs> to follow the right procedures. A, have your public hearing like you're supposed to get the input. So when it goes to justice, just as you can show that, that the public was involved in this process. And use a real vehicle to change state law. And that's what you're trying to do, trying to change state law that was written in 1991. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. All right. On this amendment, the Senate. Responding yeah, comment, Senator, Senator from Richland. I'm sorry, yeah. Senator Senator Buford, and then Senator from Dorchester. Senator, Senator from Richland stated that there doesn't seem to be sentiment in this committee to change in the primary date. That I, I don't share that. I mean, I, I think that things have been thrown into confusion. Um, people that are challenging incumbents don't know whether they're running or not. Um, I think, irrespective of the relief we provide here or whether the federal court provides relief, it's unfair to them. I mean, why is I there? Let me uh, finish. Why you just said there's not the sentiment on this committee to Only change the Only speak to on this committee is about where where you are and what you feel. So I so, listen to others on the back row who shared some different viewpoints about. The, okay, so the I'm sure I'm, I'm, I'm sure. Thank you. Yeah, we're, we're share my viewpoint now yeah. is that is that I think not only do we have to go ahead and let the individuals get on the ballot, I think it's going to be incumbent upon us, in fairness, to push back the primary date in order to give them a fair chance to campaign. And I'm not sure why one of the premises or objectives of what we're trying to do is to avoid preclearance because preclearance may necessarily require a pushback from primary date. Well, why, why, is that, why is that an objective in what we're doing to keep the, the primary date as it is now sacrosanct? I don't understand that. Question. Senator Mason may respond. I never spoke in terms of not moving. 
I spoke of what it would require. I don't have a problem trying to figure out how to get people on the ballot. That's, that, that's, not, that's not what the problem is. The problem is you've got to change state law. And to change state law, there are some very specific procedures you're going to have to change. If not, you're going to violate more than just this one section of the law trying to correct that problem. That's my concern. Mm -hmm. All right, Senator from Dorchester and then Senator from Charleston. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, I want to express this alternative solution that I think needs to be considered when voting on this. Now, somebody's already filed a federal lawsuit asking that the Supreme Court decision be declared a violation of equal protection, but also an, and a violation of due process, two, two separate theories. Now, if we want to take control, that is our legislature, of this issue and get people back on the ballot and avoid the Justice Department, instead of just a legislative solution, we could file our own lawsuit in federal court. We can ask for a declaratory judgment. We can ask for that. Look, it's already going to be asked for. It's already been filed. Either we intervene or we don't. If we do, we can ask the court to put the people back on the ballot. We can say that we think that there's a violation of equal protection and due process as applied. These are unintended consequences. This was uh, something new that hasn't occurred before. We take control, and if a federal court agrees, they're all back on the ballot. And I think that ought to be factored in, in when we're considering all these different nuances of how we're going to pass legislation that's going to have to be approved by the Justice Department. Instead, we have a clean remedy, like the Senator from Kershaw said, of just going to court ourselves. Are we going to sit back and let other people file suits and us not intervene? For example, the yeah. Senate filed, I'll say this, the Senate didn't have any trouble suing the governor when they thought there was a constitution yeah. issue in our state. Senator, so Senator, we could do the same thing or not. I don't mean to cut you short, but we, we can't decide about where to enter a federal lawsuit this morning. In, in this Why case. can't we? we? We don't have that authority. It's up to, to the president pro tem and the... Uh, we can we pass can, a resolution if we want to. Well, that's not before us. Well, then it should be well, before. Well, I, I understand that, but you want to ditch this and, 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 and propose a, a, a No, Mr. Chairman, I'm trying to solve the problem, and you got people like the Senator from Kershaw going in the same direction, and I'm just saying that all options ought to be on the table well, here. Well, let's, but one, thing, one thing at a time, we've got a pending motion. We're not going to get anything done if we don't start disposing we'll of something. We have, a, we have a pending motion uh, on the amendment from Senator from Darlington to take out the preamble language in a second. Any other discussion on that motion? Hearing none, those in favor of that motion, please raise your hand. Senator from Buford votes it no. Okay. All right, we have, let's wait, wait just a minute. Proxies, uh, Campbell, and Gregory vote aye. And Cleary. And right. Oh, he didn't cover that. All right. Now the, now the, the pending question for the committee uh, would be the amendment. And Senator Charleston, you want to be heard, Senator Ford? I wanted to be heard earlier, but... And we kept moving around, and I'm sorry. Yeah, no, no, no problem, because I was in, uh, enjoying the conversation. But <laughs> I, I, have the same, I have the same position as Senator, uh, Senator Rose just expressed. Uh, and when we get to that point, I would like to be heard. And I don't know what, whether this is the right time or not. Is this the right time for a new... Because, Mr. Chairman, this is... We're going to do one, we're gonna do one, one thing at a time. This committee cannot take up more than one, one matter at one time, and but, that's why we, we're going to follow that procedure. No, no, but you see, you can't determine whether or not this is it's the same matter. We want to move forward, and I think we should realize but if that. If you want to propose an amendment, feel free. No, no, let me say this. Based on the conversation this morning with just the 23 members from judiciary, the other 23 members from finance are long-serving, longer-serving members than we are. When they get this, imagine how long that discussion is going to take on the floor. There's no way in the world we're going to be able to pass legislation <coughs> this year to resolve this. 
The best remedy to resolve this, Mr. Chairman, and members of the committee, is simply going to the federal courts. Because if we, we present this on the floor, first of all, you're going to have probably maybe a minority report, maybe a uh, desire to be present. This is not, this is not going to become law this year. And it's almost impossible to become law. But if you go straight to federal court, like the Senator from uh, Somerville said, and like I've been trying to propose since uh, last Thursday with folks in, uh, with lawyers in Charleston, if we go straight to federal court, then the remedy would be fixed by the federal courts. Either the federal judge is going to agree with the Supreme Court or not to, uh, agree with the Supreme Court. Either way, we did what we were supposed to do as members of the General Assembly. Because now we could grandstand, gentlemen. We could grandstand. And that's what this is today. This is strictly grandstanding. You know and I know the House, the South Carolina House, and the full Senate. Will this would never see the light of day in 2012 for the, before this election. It's not going to happen. It's too easy to stop. The public needs to know it's too easy to stop this kind of stuff. Somebody's going to disagree with it. They're going to say, well, this ought to be present. You never consent to do this. I, somebody raise their hand and block it. But if we do like the senator from uh, some of you just say, enjoy in the federal suit or bring our own action, then we can resolve this and the, the candidates, the 247 candidates, will have a better chance of being on the ballot. If in fact that's what we want. Otherwise, we could let, listen to the lawyer. Y'all sound good. I mean, you you guys did a hell of a job presenting your case. And, but, but simply, the reality is that y'all know the rules of the Senate. Y'all know the rules of the General Assembly. And, and this late date, ain't nothing we're going to be able to do to uh, change all of this. Uh, Senator Edgefield has a question. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I really applaud the effort on this. I mean, I, and I, I like the goal. I like where you're going. Um, and I like your work. My, my question here is... Um, we think this would have to be required. I mean, this would have to go through pre-clearance, right? Here, we're, we're, what happens if they don't pre-clear it before June twelfth? Well, if, if are we operating under under what what the status quo is? And and do, do I? Now, I, I want to make sure I understand this. We think it's going to have to be pre-cleared. They typically are taking sixty days to pre-clear. We've got 35, 40 days until the primary. So if they don't pre-clear it before the primary, then the primary goes on as with the current date of June the 12th under the current rules. Is that right? Well, you know, that's that's a very, if, if we don't address it, we haven't gotten that far, particularly out on the floor. If we don't address sure. it in some way, uh, Senator, I can, I can assure you that uh, an affected candidate would not allow the primary to go forward without without filing some sort of action. And, and I think it would be responsible on our part, particularly if we can get something out to the floor I, I didn't want to get caught up into the weeds of, of that discussion until we have this discussion first. But, but frankly, yes, we will. There will be a need to move the primary date if if we can. If right. we can, yeah. do, but, but, but they're not mutually exclusive. Uh, you know, we. Uh, okay, but moving the primary date also requires pre clearance, right? It does, and it would have to be in the, uh, the bill at some point. All right. Well. If they take 60 days typically to pre-clear stuff, June 12th is less than 60 days. What if they don't pre-clear moving the primary before the primary gets here? Well, we need to put it in the in the in the bill at, at some point. But we got to we we haven't reached agreement on this, Senator from Edgefield, and I don't I don't know that I don't know that 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 that, that we even gonna get that far at the at the right regard. We have got about 20 minutes left in this discussion uh, before we have to start. Uh, winding it down. I understand. Yeah. I'll hold them. I, I've got other questions. I'll hold them. I'm not trying to hold anything up. Well, I want to move forward. I, I just want to caution everybody. We're quick. We're going to quickly run out of time. If if the if the members of this committee want to be heard, we, we'll sit here and, and hear you until we run out of time. Uh, but if we want to make a if we want to make a decision on this resolution, we're going to need to vote on this amendment. If there's another amendment that's offered, we'll need to discuss that and, and vote on that. But that's where we are. We're about out of time. Sir. Senator, Senator Charles, just I'll be real brief. I, but there's a passage in Proverbs that says, some things that are crooked can't be made straight. And that's true. In this instance, we've got to pick our poison one way or the other. Um, I haven't conceived of a solution that is perfect 
Sometimes there are no perfect solutions. Sometimes the writer of Proverbs is correct. Some things that are crooked can't be made straight. Um, this is not grandstanding. I didn't spend my whole weekend and almost all day yesterday working on this with staff and the chairman to grandstand. This is trying to provide a solution that has a chance of passing muster with our Supreme Court, that has a chance of withstanding an equal protection challenge, and there is a bit of poison to it, and that is we've got to get Justice Department preclearance. Um, and and so, the, but but the notion of a lawsuit is not is not mutually exclusive with this. So if that's your preference, I would encourage you not to vote against this. They are not mutually exclusive. And and anyone, so so I would encourage you to support this, even if you want to go to public. Mr. Darling, Mr. Chair, I am I want to applaud you and I applaud all the folks that worked on on this, um, in order to uh, move forward. Uh, um, I just want to make one point on the equal protection issue and then I want to end up um, um, moving to get this bill out. The equal protection issue, if it exists, applies to both sides. And so if, if those that are offended, uh, if they have an equal protection issue because of not being on it, then the 1,200 and the other people that, that actually filed may also file for equal protection to say that that's what the law was at, at the time. That's why I make the argument against the equal protection because you're talking about two different classes, the exempt and the non-exempt. And, and <laughs> Senator from Orangeburg is right when he starts, I believe, when he starts talking about a rational basis. My legal mind tells me this, my heart tells me to put everybody on the ballot that wants to be on the ballot. That's what, that's what my heart tells me. And so that's why I wanted to move this language out because I think it makes it cleaner. And so, so that we can have uh, um, the opportunity. I know what happens. I want everyone to be able to end up talking. I want to move for a favorable report. Well, we got to have adoption the amendment first. Okay. Uh, on the I mean, adoption of the right, amendment. Right. Um, and that way we can get it up so you can have a vote in, in case we run out, out of time. Right. I wanted some clarity first is that my, my amendment, the parliamentary inquiry was, is that my amendment previous takes out the finding, which was the, the prelude. That's and correct. and section one. That's correct. Okay. That's correct. And so with that, um, I don't want to take it away from we, the we, senator. We, we've already got. He's worked on it, so he would move adoption of his amendment. I would second it. That's that's the pending motion. Question is the adoption of the amendment as perfected. Those in favor of the adoption of the amendment as perfected, please raise your hand. All those opposed? Right. Favor. And then we have uh, proxies. We have uh, we have Senator Clary, Senator Campbell, Senator Gregory, and Senator Rankin. No, no, I'm sorry. No, he does not vote. 18 to 0, the amendments adopted. Any further amendments? Now the question is a favor report as amended. I asked, is there any further amendments? You got an amendment on right here we passed out. You didn't propose, I didn't hear you propose well, it. I proposed the amendment. All right, we have a proposed amendment. Senator Blackson proposed the amendment. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Since we're going to pass this thing out, we're in such a, <coughs> since we're going to pass it out, we're in such a haste to correct something that's 20 something years old. Most of us in here was not even elected at that time. and. Uh, uh, it was, uh, you know, we want to do it in three days. Uh, I applaud you for it. But let's, uh, since we're going to have to have pre-clearance pre with the Justice Department, let's go ahead and fix the problem for future elections. My proposal just simply does is very common sense deal. Right now we have 46 Democrat chairmen and 46 Republican chairmen in the state. All of them taking filing for their candidates. All of them collecting money that ends up at the State Elections Commission. We have each chairman in each county, in each party, got different standards to what they're looking for. In one county, you're talking about equal protection, one county chairman 
that may be of one party and one county of chairman that may be of the other party in the same county have different uh, requirements. So let's cut to the chase and let's, while we, we're going to have to have pre-clearance, let's go ahead and get pre-clearance on the fixing of the problem. Put the entire process, and I've talked with uh, the uh, uh, director of the election commission and also the lawyer for the Republican Party just prior to this meeting. And they both agree that this is the fix for future elections. And that is that the election commission takes all applications for <laughs> filing regardless what party or what uh, petition candidate or whatever. They take the application at the county election commission and then at that time you fill out all required documentation for filing including a, a requirement that you provide your SEI either a copy of it or a confirmation number so that the election commission can check it online. They got the computers in every one of the election office. They can check it online that you have filed. And at the time you write the check and fill out the paperwork at the election commission, you are certified at that minute, not by April the 30th. And when you walk out of there, you know you're a candidate. When you walked in, you didn't know whether you were qualified or not, but when you walk out, you are either qualified or not qualified. Senator Guy, I have a few questions. And this is an adding a, adding a uh, section to this amendment. Yes, Senator, sir, you can. Uh, if I may, your amendment is not adding a section, it's a striking insert. Is it your intention to strike the amendment that we just adopted that would allow the April 15th filing for this year's candidates? <coughs> They've written this thing three times. It is a striking. Right, it's not what I was going to do. You want it to be as and if amended? Add, add as if amended. All right. Uh, Senator Charleston, you had a question? Yes, sir. Um, Ms. Mr. Chairman, I don't, um, and members of the committee, I, I really am not, don't. I'm not, not arguing this is a bad idea, um, but I don't think this is the place and the time to do this for several reasons. I had some ideas of some changes I wanted to make to this code section while we were in it, in it. and after talking with staff and Hitchcock and Associates and many others, I concluded it's best for us just to deal <coughs> with the provisions that the court construed in order to provide a remedial response. Because, again, um, the court has held that statutes which are remedial or procedural in nature are generally held to operate retrospectively. That's South Carolina Department of Revenue v. v. Rosemary Coin Machines. And we're trying to qualify, we're trying to get this statute, this bill, to qualify under that provision. And so I think it's important for us to not to add other things that we would like to change in order to help us pass constitutional muster. As a matter of policy, I'm not arguing against the Senator from Lexington's amendment. As a matter of what's the best way to deal with this crisis, this political and legislative and even judicial crisis that's confronted the state at this juncture, now's not the time to deal with matters like this. I had provisions I wanted to put into this bill, things that needed to be fixed, but now's not the time for extraneous fixes. Now's the time to qualify under South Carolina Department of Revenue v. Rosemary as a procedural <laughs> remedial fix because the courts have generally interpreted those as being applicable retroactively and that's what we want in this instance is retroactive application. Okay, Thank you. So I would move that we not, I would, I would recommend we not adopt that. All right, Senator uh, Spartanburg, Senator Martin, do you have a comment or question? Mr. Chairman, I was just going to raise the point that you did that I don't think it was the Senator from Lexington's intentions right. to make it a strike and insert. Right, right. And I think what he's doing here has merit because 
you know, from, from what I saw during this whole process is there was a lot of miscommunication out there with a lot of people. I personally looked at myself not as an incumbent, but as a candidate. And I read all the paperwork and I filed all of my paperwork exactly like I was supposed to, whether I was an incumbent or not. And although I spent a lot of time with that, that was the way I did my process. And we're here today to, to try to help the people who didn't pick up on all that, who maybe were given misinformation. And I agree with the Senator from Charleston. I'm, I'm going to help the Senator from Lexington with this because we had I mean, both parties, 46 chairman of both parties all over the state that I believe were on different pages of the, trying to be on the same sheet of music, but they were on different pages. So I'm going to help the Senator from Lexington with his amendment, but I agree with the Senator from Charleston that I don't think this committee is the time and place for that because this is something we're going to deal with for election law next year. Okay. Uh, Mr. Chairman, you going to have to respond to that? Yes, yeah, Senator. Since uh, it's my amendment. Right. You know, people, let's quit the grandstanding. I sit here and listen, haven't said a word. Not one word. Listen to each and every one of you. All you're doing is grandstanding, trying to fix a quick fix and be, be reactionary again, just like we do up here all the time. We don't need to be reactionary. We need to not only fix it for this election, which if you want this amendment that you have to fix it, then that's fine. But also fix it for future elections. If you gotta have pre-clearance, we all know you gotta have pre-clearance, why not send it all up as a package deal and fix the whole thing? No, you want another day to come back and grandstand on this. Now, I've got a Senator Glenn Reese, a uh, senator from Spartanburg, sent me a, a uh, letter that was sent out by his party, and, he, and, and the party says, and we'll pass you out a copy of it. The well, reason I said they have 46 Democrat senators, uh, uh, chairman and 46 Republican chairmen <laughs> And all of them have different perspectives on how the law is and what is needed for filing. This is living proof. The law that was interpreted by the Supreme Court, and I applaud them for what y'all, what, what I've heard up here in these halls many, many times, is condemning the Supreme Court for this uh, uh, decisions that they make and say that basically one thing they always interpret it wrong or they make law they don't interpret the law now the thing is simply this they did their job this law was written in 1991 and it was amended in 2010 and the co-sponsors about it uh, 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 that added the amendment in 2010 was representative nathan ballantyne I had the bill here, and th then Representative Nikki Hayden. They were the main co-sponsors on the bill. And it was about transparency to let the public know what the people uh, voting to, needed to know about those people, about transparency. Now, transparency is transparency is for everybody. And that's the reason the law was changed. That's why nobody up here stood out and fussed about it. I was here. I voted for it because I've always done it. Like the senator from Spartanburg. In 1994 was my election, the first election, and I was the first uh, set of candidates that had to abide by the 1991 passage of that, of that law. And I filed everything, and I have done it every time, just like I was told to do it, because, number one, I read the law. And I sit back and listen. And I did it the right way, just like the senator from Spartanburg did. This time, I did it the right way. And if you're going to run for office, you need to know the law in order to get elected so you can pass laws. Now... Why sit up here and grandstand and say we're going to put a quick fix just to please 20% or whatever number it is, a percentage of the people that registered uh, to be a candidate? 
80% did it right, 20% did it wrong, and now we want to do a quick fix. And I'm not against them getting on the, on the ballot. But if we're going to fix it, let's fix it for future elections also. So we won't be back up here again and, and, and everybody be upset. And nobody seems to, they always say, well, let's wait the next year, wait the next year. Sir. Well, it's sort of like the old Carolina football game used to be, wait the next year. When this year, this year, next year came for Carolina, and this year, this meeting right here needs to be the time and the place that is next year for this amendment to correct this problem. Sir, darling. Mr. Chair, uh, I think that there's some, I read the body language, it seems as though that there's um, pretty good consensus for um, Senator um, Knox's um, um, proposal. And so what I would move is, is that we take Senator um, from Lexington's proposal, make it a Judiciary Committee bill to send it out on the floor separately so and, and actually it would go without reference and be placed on, on the calendar. Because the way that it's drafted now is that it's a strike all. It actually does something different. It, it also undoes, undoes something we just did. And so that it continues to have life that we make that we make it a... No, no, what does it do, uh, undo that uh, we just did? The state uh, section 2 where it says the... Uh, uh, it, that that part, sub item B, you can still you can still put it in a, in a separate issue. You put it in a separate bill. We can put it in a separate bill. We can correct that. We can correct. And Mr. Chairman, right. you know yourself sitting there. that it takes uh, two uh, it takes a, a two thirds of the body right. to pass to pass a Senate bill after May first. Now let's let the public know about the rules up here. You yeah. use the rules to be the rules. <coughs> now, it takes two thirds here. Motion? No, sir, I'm not. I'm just trying to explain to you what is being misrepresented to these people. We'll put it on the bill and send it out and be a committee bill. It takes two thirds to pass it on out and get to the House. And then the House has to vote it to take it up. So let's. Uh, if there's a problem with the amendment, they did done done something that y'all wanted in there. But the main option is fix it for the up for for the future elections. And unless you do that, this bill's daily because I'm gonna put a minority report on it and vote against it. Yeah, Senator from Kershaw uh, and then Senator, we we we're quickly running out of time. I'll see if I don't talk too long, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Yeah. Chairman, the most important thing right now is for this bill to move out. I'm going to support Senator Knott's amendment because I want the bill to move out. I'm going to support the bill because I want the bill to move out. I think the only solution is actually for us to pass a resolution <laughs> or to encourage, and I'm going to do this when we leave here, encourage the President Pro Tem to join the federal lawsuit, state that it is a violation of equal protection so that the court can find that and we won't have to push the primaries back. There's just too many hoops to jump through otherwise. I'm all for moving this track along. I'm going to vote to do it. That's why I want to vote the Sports Center Knott's Amendment because I don't want it to stand in the way. And then we can try to change something on the floor of the Senate. But I'm telling you, if we don't join in the federal lawsuit or we don't pass a resolution to join the federal lawsuit, then nothing's going to happen, and that's just reality. Senator Sparkberg. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I agree with what's trying to be done here to get this out. Is there any reason that the senator from Lexington's amendment can't be put on at the floor? And I think he talks about the rules and the process. I think he's, I think if he puts his amendment up on the floor to this resolution, I believe he can hold the floor to talk about it. Well, about it. here's, here's so, what we can do. Senator Sparkman, you raise a good point. Uh, as long as we understand this, his amendment, and I think he said this, applies prospectively. And it, it would not it would not impede the, 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 the fix that we've already adopted by way of an amendment. I don't think there's any harm at all. And the reason I say that, Mr. Right. Chairman, is because we, I know that I know that his amendment is written incorrectly at this yeah. point. I don't believe it's his right. intention to write the amendment the way right. it's written. Okay. So we, I agree with the Senator from Kershaw. We, we need to move on with the bill and let him offer his amendment on the floor to this. Yeah, he's gonna sign a minority report if we don't put the amendment on Senator Spartan. Well are we gonna take time to draft it correctly? Yes, sir. We, we, we've, got, we've got the technical draft. Yes, Senator from Buford. Mr. Chairman, the reason I, I, this thing was... Senator from uh, Buford. I, I'd like to um, ask Senator, Senator from Charleston, Senator Kansen, again, the research that you've done in making sure that the remedial fix that we pass um, sustains or, or, or passes Supreme Court muster, 
is it your opinion that adding on something of this nature prospectively into the bill impedes the constitutionality of that remedial fix? I think it does, to some extent. I think it does. And I and so we have tried to keep extraneous no. matters off of the bill. And that I've, I've had consultation with staff on that. Um, I, I had an amendment I wanted, a fix I wanted to make in this code section. And I've been talking to staff as I'm driving up and um, they just advised me, they looked at it and they looked at it more closely and felt like we need to just keep extraneous stuff off. So this is a rifle shot to make it sure is a that justice is rendered to those who, who thought they had complied with the statutory requirements and were ruled out on technicality. This is a rifle shot to fix that wrong. That's correct. And in your opinion, is there any reason why we need to have a permanent fix appended to that remedial matter? I mean, isn't there time? Don't we have time to yes. do a permanent fix before this next election? Yes, we do. Senator from Fairfield. I think an issue that we have before us not only is, is opening it up like we've done, but also there has been inconsistency in how this thing has been applied statewide. Let's face it. Some people are just letting everybody in, and some, some counties are doing the right thing and interpreting the law by the, what the Supreme Court said. That's not fair. And I think it's incumbent upon us to fix that problem also. Um, and if we don't, I mean, I'm, we have to fix that. <laughs> Senator Sparkberg, and then we're going we're gonna to have to we're going to have to wrap this up. Mr. Chairman, just just briefly, when I look at Senator Knott's amendment, Senator from Lexington, I will give you. I notice that the uh, it says the four must be five with the same official at the same time, which is kind of where we got in this mess to begin with. So it seems like it's under. They, they would they would, uh, and this is prospective. But then then you would know you would you would you would you would file online. You would hand them the, the printed form before you could file. It's that simple. And everybody would do the same thing, incumbents and uh, uh, candidates. So, they, so that would be basically, instead of them doing it electronically, they would have to... No, you would do it electronically, but you'd print it out and hand them the copy that you filed electronically. And, they, and you couldn't file. You would not be able to file unless you did that. Okay. And that would be with the county official that he's designated. Uh, Senator Lexington, you want to make a brief comment in response, and then we're going to have to. Well, well have Senator, to I, I just want to just make this point before I, I lose the floor here is that when you say that, say the paperwork doesn't arrive to the state headquarters, then you got a burden of proof. If it's done electronically, well, you give you, it to the official. But what if it, what if he's what if later they sign an affidavit saying the official he did give it to the official the official says yeah he gave it to me but the state party he can't accept it. it. He cannot accept it from you unless he unless you hand it to him. He it. He that, that, that's that, that's the way it worked, and that's the way it used to work before we went to electronic filing. He could, the person could not accept that there was no reg, uh, election official around the state that could accept your your declaration of candidacy unless you handed them a hard copy of that form. They couldn't do it. It was against the law. They could not do it. Well, I, I just want to, to reiterate what uh, Senator Coleman said. I mean, it, this has not been applied uniformly around the state. That's correct. And we got a That's major correct. problem. We are, we are out of time. The Senator from Lexington. Yes, Mr. Chairman, I think that, that, that we need to make a, a fix to this problem. And I think the date that you have on here, what, what, what is the date that you have on the amendment now? On the it's prospective. Amendment? It's, it's prospective on future elections. That's the way you. I know it, but I'm talking about on the actual bill that we've uh, uh, we've passed, or well, not passed, but we're talking about that we're amending my amendment to. The date that we either. have is what date? Is it uh, March the thirtieth? Oh, April. April. It would be April fifteenth, and then uh, uh, the five-day grace period. That's the amendment as. So you are changing. The filing period. We've already, adopt, five, we've already adopted that amendment. So. Okay, that's what I'm saying. Yes. Okay, so that does have to have pre clearance. Yes, we, you got to. Yes. Okay. So your amendment is before the uh, body prospectively. Those in favor of the yes, amendment. Yes, Mr. Chair, and we have, and we've changed the um, the language. Did we yeah. move to strike the? She's going to perform. You're going, you're going to perform it. Be, be prospective. Okay. Well, I first move that we that we conform. 
Right. We're gonna do. We're gonna vote for it. I said we're gonna vote. For it. I move that we conform his amendment to take out the strike amendment. Right. Any objection? Hearing none, so ordered. Now the question is the adoption of the amendment. All those in favor, please raise your hand. The adoption of Senator Lexington's amendment. It's fine. It's fine. You get a minority report otherwise. All right. All those opposed? And how many proxies do we have? We had some of you. Larry votes aye. Gregory votes aye. And I don't know if we can use that or not. Just that's a name. How do you vote? All right, by vote of by a vote of 13 to 7, the amendments adopted. Any further amendments? Hearing none, now the question is the adoption of the bill as amended. Those in favor, please raise your hand. Before you do that, we, tell me what we have done. <laughs> well, <laughs> I'll, give you, I'll give you a brief overview. Right. Well, we're in the middle of the Well, we, but he, he's asked for, he's asked let me for ask, Okay, let me ask you one question, Clar clarify. Under what we just did with all the candidates being on the ballot. Unless they didn't file one at all, they, they would be on the ballot. And I think there are some that did not file any at all, and they would not be on the ballot. They didn't file on the Well, they, did, they filed did they file after on time? April 20th. Yeah. Did they try to file on time? I don't, I, don't, I don't know. It, it just if, if they didn't file by April 15th with the five-day grace period, which is April 20th, this this would not capture them. Mr. Chairman, change my vote to no. On your amendment? I mean, on the bill? On the bill. On the bill. All right. Does that, does that explain? Does that answer your question? All right. The question is the adoption of the bill as amended. Those in favor, please raise your hand. Those opposed, no. Mr. Chairman. I'm in the middle of a vote, unless you... All right. Mr. Chairman. I wait just a minute. Mr. Chairman, I have a motion. Senator, wait a minute. we got to finish the vote. Hold on just a second. The proxies will be Senator Clary, Senator Gregory, Senator Rankin. No, can't vote him. 16 to 2. The, the bill is reported out favorably as amended. Senator from Lexington. May I ask you a question? Yes, sir. Explain this. Does the bill that we're fixing, that we're voting on, does it say that the people that attempted to file during the time of filing up to March 30th that did not get on the ballot would be on the ballot? Yes, sir. That's what it says. Yes, sir. Now, what about the people that didn't comply until after the filing date had ended? Are we they to still end. going to be able to That's the first yes, violate the law and be on the ballot? That's the first yes. amendment we adopted. Mr. Chair. First Amendment we adopted. Senator from uh, Darling. In order to make sure that we can have something parallel, I, I will ask that the committee hang on for just a second. The, um, the, the matter that the Senator from Lexington has filed, I would ask, I would move that we take his amendment, make it a committee bill standalone, and send out to the floor as, as well. So he will blue back it, he will go across the desk, be placed on the calendar. Senator from Lexington's up. up. Amendment. It's already part of the bill. I understand, but the thing is, he's is signing a minority report. On. I understand he may not sign a minority report on his own bill, though, so it gives it, it gives it a chance still. I just think we give it an opportunity to give to give it a chance to pass. All right, we've got a proposed a motion. Is there a second? Second. All right, I have a second. All those in favor of the senator's motion, please raise your hand. Be a committee bill on the proposal as presented. Gives it a chance to pass, guys. 
Who just hit the base? All right. All those opposed? All right, boy, hold up just a minute. We got to have a, a vote uh, in three proxies: Gregory, Clary, and that's it. And Rankin. All right, by a vote of 15 to zero, the committee bill will be reported to the floor. The committee will no further business coming forth. The committee will stand in recess to reconvene at 3 p.m. Senate committee's in recess.